introduce to you a speaker from Tel Aviv, Nadav Tal, who was um, in introduced to us by the Heinrich Böll Stiftung. Thank you very much for this connection in the first place. Uh, Nadav Tal is based in uh, Tel Aviv, trained as a hyd uh, hydrologist and uh, works as a water officer for EQP's Middle East since 2015. He previously worked in the private sector as a consultant to the Ministry of Environment in Israel in the field of soil pollution and groundwater remediation. Nadav has been an environmentalist since childhood, dedicating his career to working in conservation and combining this with outdoor activities in Jordan, Israel and Palestine. Today, Nadav Tal is going to speak about the Green-Blue Deal for the Middle East. This presentation seeks to inform the considerations of Israeli, Jordanian and Palestinian policymakers and the understanding of international stakeholders as they work to meet the challenges posed by climate change in the region. A Middle East Green-Blue Deal, one that gives additional emphasis to the particular importance of water and water scarcity issues in the region is a practical, feasible and effective policy approach to an urgent challenge and one that can serve to address conflict drivers, advance a two-state solution based on the 1967 borders and promote trust building and cooperation in a conflict mired region. I welcome now the next speaker, Nadav Tal. Nadav, are you there? Can you hear me? Uh, I think that you need to unmute yourself on uh, WeMix and then... Ah, yes. Uh, I need to mute myself in the Zoom link or... Now it's fine. What? I can hear you clearly. I think it was just uh, on WeMix. It's fine now. Okay, so I mute myself here. On Zoom, okay. you need to unmute and on WeMix, yeah. The inverse way around. We mix uh, unmute and on Zoom you need to mute. Okay, okay. So I'll go back to Zoom. Thank um, you. Mm -hmm. Why I cannot? Ah, okay. So now I hear you clearly. Mm -hmm. The presentation, I'm on the share screen. Um, okay, you see my presentation? At the moment I see you. One moment. I think the technicians are on it right now. Okay, so until the technician now uh, figuring it out, I just want to uh, present uh, my organization. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably heard the news from the Middle East. Uh, now we're facing a war, Israel, uh, between Israelis and Palestinians. And the situation is very, very bad. In a particular manner, uh, many people are dying. And the situation is, you know, uh, working in a peace movement is always challenging while uh, uh, these times are happening. Uh, but today I'm going to present something optimistic. Uh, I'm working in an organization, EcoPeace Middle East. We are uh, one organization of uh, Palestinians and Jordanians that work together with the same objectives. Uh, to advance uh, uh, environmental uh, conservation, uh, we mainly on uh, the water. We are focusing on uh, water quality. Um, the area of the Middle East and Israel, Palestine, and Jordan, uh, the geographical areas that the water resources are all shared by the three countries. Uh, the groundwater are shared surface water are shared, and if we not cooperate between us, we're going to lose these uh, very uh, precious water resources that we have in the Middle East. And this is uh, how EcoPeace was founded, because we saw that the peace uh, process or, uh, you know, the conflict is, is, is like, we, we're taking it out of the... Um, of the different, uh, uh, you know, uh, atmosphere between the countries. And we want to bring people together to work on the environment, 
increase uh, water supply for everybody in the region. And with that, you know, uh, getting to know each other and maybe promote peace and uh, uh, we can agree on other things as well. But right now we're bringing Israelis and Palestinians together and Jordanians on the environmental issues. Okay, can I start the presentation? Or? Yes, you can start. We can see it now. Yes, okay. So um, the Green Blue Deal we're offering in the Middle East is based on um, the Green Deal that is now initiated in the United States under uh, Biden administration. Uh, but we introduced also the blue into it on water. And why is water is so important to our region uh, when we talk about climate change and global warming. The Middle East is an area in MENA region, uh, also North Africa, is an, the area that is affected the most from this global crisis of climate crisis. Uh, we suffer for many drought years and the lack of precipitation in our area. Uh, you can see on these maps uh, the area that suffers the most in the world. You can see the MENA region. And it's going to get worse and worse. We don't do anything regarding uh, the climate cri crisis. Uh, and we think that none of the country can deal with this crisis alone. And we want to increase interdependency between the different parties to mitigate this climate crisis. Uh, you can see on these charts here about what is expected you know, um, in the future, we can see that the summer time, uh, during the summer in the Middle East, mainly on our Eastern Mediterranean area, we don't get any rain. Rain comes only on winter time. Uh, so the, the, science, the science people predict that um, we're going to get longer summer and less rain. Okay. And well, the longer sun will uh, will be in the future for for 2100 or even 2065, uh, the rise of the temperature will be very high. It means that in some areas in the Middle East, it will be impossible to live in because of this hot temperature. Uh, not talking about the lack of rain, and uh, then we have problems on the water resources. The water resources will be limited. And that's uh, an introduction to humanitarian crisis. Okay. Now, when we talk about cooperation on water and environment, uh, one of the main issues we have here is the pollution that come mainly from Gaza and the West Bank into Israel, cross-border pollution. This is uh, a e uh, satellite image in remote sensing that uh, shows the pollution that come from Gaza shores into Israel. Uh, we have Gaza here that uh, they have uh, uh, most of the city is not connected to, sh to sewage network and wastewater treatment plants. Thus, the uh, sewage goes to Gaza. Uh, uh, sewage goes to the Mediterranean and then flow north with the flows to Israel, Ashkelon and Ashdod here, two Israeli cities that suffers from the pollution come from Gaza. Now, not all the time, uh, uh, Gaza has wastewater treatment plants, but uh, Gaza doesn't have electricity all the time. Like now in the situation of the war in Gaza, they have less electricity and that caused the uh, wastewater treatment plant not working. And then the pollution goes to the, to the Mediterranean and this is also a problem of Israel. So on these days, when we talk about the environment, nobody listens to us because we're in a situation of war. But uh, uh, most of the time, you know, when we have uh, more quiet uh, times, uh, people understand today that Gaza and Israel, the environmental situation, and also um, when we talk about diseases that can happen, because of uh, lack of sewage networks, it's also a problem of uh, the Israelis that around Gaza, because as we know, disease doesn't know any border. Corona is a good example. 
And uh, only by cooperation, even though uh, the situation is very difficult politically, uh, we have to uh, manage in some way uh, to help Gaza uh, with water and with electricity, the humanitarian crisis. Um, this is uh, Israel, Palestine, and Jordan together with no borders. As you see here, this is mainly um, the aquifer basin and the drainage uh, basins of different rivers and streams. Uh, as you can see, everything is shared. You know, the surface water, mainly we have the Sea of Galilee here, the Jordan River, and the Dead Sea, which is all being shared between Israel, Palestine, and Jordan. All the different streams that go from the mountain area to the Mediterranean is all being shared by Palestinian Israelis and on the eastern side also Jordanians. So in order to manage uh, these water resources, there has to be some kind of uh, cooperation. And uh, there is a peace agreement between Israel and Jordan that deals a lot about water management between these countries but we lack a more updated agreement between Israel and Palestine that was signed in 1995, uh, but it was only an intermediate agreement and not permanent. Uh, so there is still a conflict, water conflict between Israel and Palestine, but between Israel and Jordan, there is an agreement that talks about the water allocation between uh, to the two countries. Uh, our vision for this area between Israel, Palestine, and Jordan is, um, is a kind of a trade-off between renewable energy and desalination, and uh, water. I'm sorry. The idea is because Israel is a water power, I don't know if uh, some of you know, but Israel produces a lot of water from the Mediterranean in desalination plants, and today can provide this water also to its neighbor if it's Palestine or Jordan. Uh, while Jordan, uh, in, in contrast, they are uh, very rich in uh, land compared to Israel and Palestine, uh, and they are able to produce more renewable energy from the sun. Uh, today, the world going to this direction of renewable energy, and unfortunately, we, though we are we're in areas that is rich with, uh, with sun and light, uh, we are not very advanced in the world uh, with renewable energy. And uh, we have many reasons for that in Israel. But uh, to have this kind of uh, uh, solar, uh, solar areas in Jordan for water is, is something that will, it's a win-win situation for everybody, but it's also create interdependency between countries and interdependency uh, leads to stability, political stability, and this is our main goal. It's also helping the environment, bringing water security for everybody, and uh, advancing uh, renewable energy in the area. Uh, and the question is, you can ask yourself, why why does it not happening? Um, it is not happening because of the political situations, lack of trust, ignorance, uh, infrastructure that is problem, you know, political instability, all of these things you can think of uh, preventing this kind of cooperation to happen. Uh, but this is our vision and dream for the region. So we did a pre-feasibility study that talks about this uh, project, and we checked uh, some geopolitical factors uh, about achieving water secu security, energy security, uh, diversification of energy resources, reduce dependence, dependence on Israel, promoting regional stability, integration with Arab world, improving international standards, all the factors that we want to see in the region. We saw that Jordan, Palestine, and, and Israel are all benefiting from such a project. Okay? Some people think we you we are doing. Look what's happening in the area. We always like hearing about bombs and you know uh, the opposite of what we vision for. But Europe is a great example. Uh, we're talking about the post coal and steel agreement, prosperity in Europe. Yes, after the World War II, uh, countries that were uh, 
big enemies and nobody thought peace will uh, thrive between them, uh, uh, came together and signed the Colin Steel Agreement, which is today the base for the European Union. So it's quite different from the Israeli-Palestinian or Arab conflict, but it still brings us kind of hope that even after uh, the biggest war and destruction, uh, you can, can come out from it and uh, prosper. Okay? Even though we are in a war for many, many years, still there is hope, and this is a good uh, example of interdependencies that came up between uh, Germany and France. Um, so uh, when we talk about uh, uh, the, uh, the game change of the Middle East today is, of course, desalination. Uh, Israel is a world champion in uh, water recycling, but also in uh, water production. All the climate crisis and uh, years of drought led Israel to invest uh, strategically in desalination plants. Some of the uh, biggest desalination plants in the world in, you know, in Israel, and you can see uh, the capacity of uh, we're talking about capacity of uh, scope of desalination over one billion and hundred million mcm million cubic meter uh, for the year of 2050. Okay, um, it's excluding Gaza. Uh, we want to see also a desalination plant in Gaza. So all uh, these desalination plants will bring water to the national system in Israel. It can lead water to the Sea of Galilee and from there to Jordan, and it can lead water to Gaza and to uh, the West Bank. Uh, so for sure, Israel will be able to bring more water to its neighbors. So we want to use water as a tool to increase uh, peace and political stability. Okay, so what's needed is, is to change the water paradigm. What's well, what I'm meaning by that? Okay, we as I told you before, in the 1995 we had the Oslo II Accord between Israel and Palestinian. Uh, it was supposed to be replaced by a final water agreement within five years and fulfillment of Palestinian water rights to share natural water. That didn't happen because uh, uh, the process has failed. Uh, the Second Intifada, the uprising of the Palestinians started, and whatever uh, was agreed in 1995, it's still what the Palestinians get today. We think uh, after this alienation, there is a place to change this agreement and to allow and allow the Palestinians to have uh, more water allocation. And this is something we uh, promote through the Israeli Water Authority and the Israeli government, but still. Uh, we always need two sides to tango, and we still have, doesn't have the will for the parties to agree on this. Why? Because still today we, we're facing the all or nothing paradigm holding resolution of what you issue hostage. Hostage, we want to agree on all the issues that uh, divide us, if it's Jerusalem, the refugees, settlements, and all the other issues that are between Palestinians and Israelis. The reason we don't have peace, we say that we need to take water out of this equation and agree on the water issues. So, as I mentioned, today with uh, desalination, uh, it's possible. Okay. Uh, we have the joint water committee between Israelis and Palestinians uh, that fell interest of both people. Okay? We see uh, the water management in the West Bank. Is, is failed, the Palestinians not getting enough water, and the Israelis get pollution that come from the best West Bank, mainly from sewage, but also industrial sewage that flows from the West Bank into Israel and from Gaza into Israel. And we have a lose-lose situation right now. Okay. Uh, water supply, yes. Uh, I don't know if you know, but in some uh, areas in Jordan, water uh, is allocated only tw once in two weeks. Okay? And many people, uh, mainly in Gaza, get water from a tank. Yes, from a tank. And this is Jerica, and these are the water su supply in many areas. Uh, 
Uh, and we think it can be changed. You know, uh, it's only it's not only Israel they need to supply. You know, where uh, the Palestinians and Jordanians need to improve their water management as well. But only through a uh, cooperation between the th- uh, the, the three sides, uh, we can uh, we can reach water security. And one of the reasons we don't have water security today is because of the political conflict. This is a, a this is an example of the cross border pollution that we uh, we have in Israel, the Hebron Stream that's in the south, Kishon it's in the north, Ariel and Salfit area, Alexander coming from the West Bank. All these rivers are suffering from pollution that come from the West Bank into Israel. And today, Israel uh, failed to uh, to treat these problems. Uh, and many people are desperate because there is no cooperation and the environment uh, is the one who suffers. So, moreover, we have the Jordan River. I know the Jordan River is a big subject today uh, in, in the conference. Uh, as you see on your left-hand side, that's the Jordan River. Okay, it's, it looks not more like a sewage canal. You know, if you go to Germany, nobody probably really uh, uh, sees this kind of canal as a river. But that's the famous Jordan River, the river that Jesus was baptized in. And today it's just a small canal, uh, mainly with sewage as well. And that's because of a lack of cooperation and also water diversions, uh, uh, mainly by Syria, Israel, and Jordan. Uh, uh, the water diversion of the Jordan River leads to uh, the demise of the Dead Sea. On your right hand side, you can see the Dead Sea shrinks uh, every year by one meter point three, and this is also an ecological disaster. It leads to a uh, creation of sinkholes, mainly on the uh, west bank of the Dead Sea in Israel, but also in Jordan. And this is a situation uh, the world and many of the countries around uh, don't take it really seriously because uh, if we don't do anything, the, the, the Dead Sea uh, will, uh, will be uh, like a puddle, you know, uh, in the future. Okay. So what we do as Epopis to, to help the situation, we uh, hired a very uh, prestigious uh, env- environmental consultant from the Netherlands called DHV or Haskening. Uh, they, they built for us a master plan for the Jordan River Basin. Uh, the, the plan was talking about a rehabilitated and accessible a regional symbol of peace and source of economic prosperity for Palestinian, Jordanian, and Israelis together to take the Jordan River and use it as a regional water carrier Instead of pipes, canals, and dams, what we see today, we want to increase the water flow. And this is as the uh, salinity level, yes, of, uh, of the different uh, flows. To take the, uh, the river Jordan, uh, divide it to three main parts, that in each part we'll have more flow of water. This area will get water from the Sea of Galilee, which less salinity. Uh, this area will get a mix of fresh water and effluent water, and this is salty water flowing to the Dead Sea. Uh, the objective is not just to improve the ecological lives of the Jordan River and the flows and all we know about the biodiversity that's related to water, but also to increase the economical and prosperity of the people in the Jordan Valley. You know, mainly the east bank of the Jordan River in Jordan suffers from poverty unemployment, and then it leads to radicalism. So as we see the Jordan Valley more prosperous, with more water, more tourists will come. The Jordan River will attract more uh, pilgrims come to be baptized in the Jordan River. And that can lead to prosperity for all sides. So we did uh, in the master plan to see what's the uh, uh, GDP uh, today. In, let's say to, uh, for 2010, this is the year that we uh, checked it out. We see that 51% of the GDP in the Jordan Valley is by Israel, but our 
master plan says that we want to see more divided between Israel, Palestine, and Jordan, the prosperity from the Jordan Valley, but mainly from the Jordanian side. You know, about 600,000 Jordanians living on the, uh, on the Jordanian side, while on the uh, west side is much less. It's about 60,000 people. So 10 times more living in Jordan uh, than on the west side. And so we want to bring the GDP from 4 billion US dollars into 2010 to 73 billion US dollars in 2050, but it's only be achievable only with political will and cooperation, which is uh, the hardest to achieve. So when we try on the top down level to convince the government, uh, different ministries to promote our you know, objectives, most of the time it's really hard because political, political reasons. So we try the bottom up approach. We come to the children, to youth, to mayors. What you see on your right hand side is a picture of the different mayors of communities along the Jordan River, jumping into the river, calling to the government to stop the demise of the Jordan River, which is, has uh, some influence. You know, when we see the community is calling for the leaders to change their mindset. And on your left hand side is youth gathering that we uh, we do uh, between Palestinians, Israelis, uh, Jews, and Arabs sitting together. And the slogan is, water has no borders. Okay? We want to show everybody that uh, uh, only by cooperation, and this is the kind of exercise they do with a rope. If somebody uh, releases a rope, everything collapses. Yes? So we, went, we need to work together, you know, to cooperate. Uh, uh, and this is how we, uh, we try to uh, uh, you know, uh, take off the barriers between uh, between people. So, as the final uh, uh, thing, optimistic thing, this is our uh, directors, Israeli directors here, Gidon and Ada, our Palestinian directors, and uh, Yana, with a, a, a Finnish foreign minister. And this is, uh, uh, they called us on the Germany was the president of the Security Council about two years ago. Uh, they called ECOPIS to present in the Security Council. And why Germany called us? Uh, because there was another discussion like we have these days on the political situation in the Middle East. And it always bad things about violence, about you know, uh, many bad things that happened. So uh, Germany said, why not once we will bring something optimistic about the Middle East? So they called the uh, ECOPIS, and ECOPIS presented in the Security Council a work, uh, and it was very well received. Palestinian ambassador received it well, and the Israeli ambassador received it well. So uh, uh, there is hope. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nadav. Uh, um, it was a very impressive speech, uh, giving hope in times like this. And also, thank you very much for being with us at uh, this time at the moment. Um, we're gonna. I cannot hear you. Are you gonna hear me? Can you hear me now? Now I can hear you. Ah, okay. I think it was just the microphone. Um, I was saying thank you very much for these um, uh, very impressive insights, spreading hope at a time of um, crisis, also that you made it possible to speak with us today um, in the situation we're facing right now. Um, I hope that we have the chance to talk a little bit later, if you have the time, because we're going to speak now to Anduki Jordan, who's working as an artist very much on a project in the area. And uh, I think there's a very interesting link between uh, both of your initiatives. Um, so I hope that you're going to stay online and maybe speak to you in about half an hour again. That would be great. OK, I will try to make it, uh, because I have another meeting. I'm sorry. OK, uh, if it's not it's possible, it's thank you very much for joining us today. I will try today. to make it. Anyways, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.